Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I just want to talk about what happens if we're wrong about what could happen with inflation, gold and silver, any of that kind of stuff. And it's really nothing to be concerned of. I plan for being wrong a lot of the time and I know that might sound funny but I'll explain. What I mean by that is I don't want to put all my eggs in hyperinflation, stagflation basket. I actually think inflation's probably gonna be transitory, but I realize that this is, this, in my mind, it's like a coin toss. What's gonna, what inflation will look like. It could easily, easily turn into stagflation. There's always variables, and there's too many to say for sure what's gonna happen in the future. You can't, if we have great economic growth, we have good wage rises, People are having trouble finding workers. How do you get workers? You have to entice them to come to work. You gotta pay them more. Give signing bonuses, things like that. The free markets always work themselves out. I kind of am in the camp of, I'm leaning a little towards the inflation is transitory just because we're, all, we're planning on raising rates. That's what the central banks are announcing. Why should we say, hey, yeah, they're announcing that they're planning on raising rates and everything like that. But, we're not gonna think that they're gonna actually gonna do it. I, I just doesn't make sense to me and that will curb the inflation. And people can start paying back debts but not taking out more because now they're taking it out at a higher interest rate and they're not refinancing debt. These are realistic things that can happen which can subtract from the money supply and reduce it overall. These are just basic simple things that are easy tools. People say that the only tool that the Fed has is to print money. What about the Fed funds rate? That's not a tool. I'm not in that camp. I just see everything as a whole and I see inflation running hot for the next while. But it's not gonna last forever. I don't think America's done as a country or anything like that. I don't think doomsday is gonna happen tomorrow. That's just not what I believe. I think that it could easily turn into stagflation and you could be in for a real hard time. But when I hear plans on raising rates and everything like that, I already made a video. You can click it right there, there, follow the link, it should be on the screen, but inflation is always transitory until central banks say, hey, there isn't enough money for people to buy things. Therefore, it's not that we have too much money being the problem, it's when they see it as we don't have enough money as the problem. That is the issue that causes these major changes. One big concern I do have though is, could, in, could the economic recovery stagnate and we end up with stagflation? That is a very realistic concern of mine. I'm not so much in the hyperinflation camp. That's just not the camp I'm in at all. I don't think the Canadian dollar, the US dollar is gonna turn into Zimbabwe currency. That's not my belief at all. I see inflation being hot. I see it being persistent for a little bit, but I don't, I see it going away. I see an end, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. And as long as the economic recovery can happen, I see people choosing not to work right now when there's a plethora of jobs available. Wages go up, you pay them more to work instead of sitting at home. It's also, what do you think happens when these benefits run out? I don't think these benefits are going to last forever. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to last forever. I've been wrong before, but I have a portfolio of that. Normally when I'm wrong, I still make money. That's just the way I'm set up. That's why my goal is 12% a year gains. Because even if I'm right, I've hedged my bets. That's what gold and silver are for. That's the whole point, to be a hedge on my portfolio. Things like that. Do you think that that's the only way I hedge? Not at all. I hedge in many ways and I hedge all my bets. So then if I'm wrong, I still make money. And that is the key. Not making the great moves investing, it's avoiding the bad ones. That's my whole plan. That's my plan to thrive in life. I'm not too worried about inflation being hyperinflation. That's not my real worry at all. My concern is having the economic recovery not being able to keep up nearly like at all with inflation, which I think that there's gonna be a big gap, but as I feel like as long as we have strong recovery periods, as we have strong inflation periods, 
everything will end up working out, but things don't always go smooth in life. There's always speed bumps and there's always hiccups. And what, how big are those speed bumps? How big are those hiccups? That's my concern. The money printed, you could cause a credit crunch, take currency out of circulation. That is a thing that can happen. But I also think that we are gonna see rates rise. Like, they've basically been announced. The plans to raise rates have been, they're out there. I just don't see inflation being hyperinflation. I could see it being high and persistent for a year or two, but I do not see it turning into hyperinflation. I could be wrong, I'm, I'll make money if I'm wrong. That's why I hedge all my bets. That's the lesson that I've learned investing. You can make, you can think about everything perfectly logical, but if not everyone else is, the markets don't act logically, you will lose money. That's just the way it works. Your accounting on logic to play out isn't actually always the best scenario. Normally that's what happens, but from my experience and my short time investing, it's just avoiding the bad mistakes. That's the key to success. If you can limit the amount of mistakes you make, just by hedging your bets, that's all it takes. And if you find, and the more, the more time, like I'm still learning better ways to hedge my bets as I go. I haven't been investing for decades or anything, I'm only 25. That's just the way it is though. I hedge my bets, I'm wrong, I still make money. My portfolio still gains as a whole. When I'm right, I don't make as much money, but if I'm still able to make that 12% a year, that's great. I'm gonna be crazy wealthy when I'm older. That is not a concern of mine at all, how much I maximize my investing. I just don't want to make mistakes. I'm not gonna get greedy. I have a simple way of investing. I buy based on value. When I see the value of silver being extremely cheap, way cheaper than it really ever should be, yeah, I'm buying, I'm buying decent amounts, meaningful amounts. I know the value of gold, being able to store wealth throughout the inflation that we're probably going to see in this coming bit. I know the value of that. Even if we're not going to see crazy high inflation, why wouldn't you stack it anyways? Why is... It... I did another video, link should be on the screen, of me showing you why you should buy silver today because of inf what inflation does. Even just l s small amounts of inflation, it doesn't need to be this crazy 10%, 20% a year or something. It doesn't need to be that high to really do damage. These are just my thoughts, just my opinions. I would love to know all of your guys' thoughts and opinions. What do you think about setting up your portfolio, hedging your bets, just so that if you are wrong, you are still making money? I need to take some big event, some that causes a lot of emotion in order for your portfolio to really go down ever. That's kind of the way I do it. That's kind of my strategy as a whole. I'm not trying to make quick cash. It's a trap. That's just my personal opinion. I love to know your guys'. Thank you so much. See you next time. Stay positive. Thanks.